Hey there, folks, and welcome back to the I Am CDB Project. I, of course, am your host, CDB. You are not, and we're going to talk about a number of things today, as well as do a shave. A few things that the inspector sent to me I want to talk about. One being this bowl from, I don't know how you say it, Pereira Shaving or something like that out of Portugal, I believe. This is for sale. I found it at West Coast Shaving. There may be other retailers that sell it uh, <clears throat> as well. Anyway, really nice ridges in there. This is plastic. It's not likely to break. A lot of vendors call bowls unbreakable. Uh, and to a certain extent, yes, if you you know throw it on the uh, floor here, it's, it's, it's not likely to break unless it's really brittle or something. So, But I don't like to call anything unbreakable because with enough effort, you can break it. Um, but that said, this is a deep... Uh, plastic bowl as I talked about yesterday it's got this nice handle you can hold it it's light doesn't weigh much you can set your brush in like so this also of course from West Coast Shaving we'll use this again today nice ridges in there and they go up most of the way on the sides really nice bowl I like this bowl again sent to me by the inspector uh, I think it's around 35 something at West Coast Shaving um, nice bowl I actually prefer it over my Timeless bowl, which I love. You know, the handle helps. The, the little stand there is not, you know, it's it's not uh, going to put it over the top, but it's a nice thing to have. But overall, I think this is just a really nice bowl. Still a little soap left in there from yesterday, but um, I really like it. So one of the things he sent <laughs> that I do not like, uh, look, folks, I just have to be honest. And I'm assuming this is why he sent... He sent some of this stuff for me to give away anyway. So this, um, uh, I'm not even sure the name of the company, Chantilly Lux or something like that. I don't know how to say that name. Um, we'll show you the bottle. This is an aftershave. Anyway, I went on the website and looked at it and there's some story that I really wasn't Terribly, and I just want to know how something smells when it comes to aftershaves, and I guess this was a special edition, special run, limited run. Um, I'm not interested in the descriptions and, and history. Um, that's an artsy point, uh, an artsy thing that you know artisans obviously like to do. They where they get their inspiration from. That's all well and good. Not interested. I'm not interested whatsoever. Does it smell good? What are the notes? And so without looking, I took this one. And when I, uh, I, I gotta tell you, the first thing that comes to mind when you take the cap off, it smells like whiskey, is what it smells like to me. Now, if you really hold it under your nose, that sort of changes a little. But it sort of smells like a cheap bourbon. Um, and I know, because I like bourbon and I like scotch, but this smells like sort of like a cheap uh, bourbon and I do not like that. I like to drink bourbon on occasion. I do not want it on me as an aftershave and I'm assuming this is the reason uh, the inspector sent it to me. Either somebody probably gave it to him. I can't imagine he would buy this. Um, but this is a no for me. This is a absolute no. It smells awful in my opinion. That said, I don't know the folks at this company. I'm sure they're nice folks. I'm sure they produce a lot of things that are really, really nice, but whoo. Uh, it, it smells like you could turn this guy up and, and catch a buzz from it. And again, there's the <laughs> name at the bottom. Snai or Snee Mato or I don't know how you say it. Anyway, I didn't even finish reading the story because again, I'm just not interested. I want to know, does something smell nice? Uh, am I going to like it on me? Is my wife or others going to like it on me? And chances are... If I'm trying to wear this guy, the police are going to like it on me because they're going to be trying to throw me in jail because I smell like whiskey. That's what it sort of presents itself as. Not a really good fragrance for something you're going to wear, just my opinion. Now, I'll show you one that is a good fragrance, which I'm going to be using today, the Razor Rock Blue uh, Barbershop, which I've used, as you can see, quite a bit. Uh, that smells nice, so I'm going to be using that. Along with the soap, the inspector had, and Laura had sent this to me a little over a year ago, or gave it to me when I was up there or something. 
Oh, I love this. Just a sort of a powdery barbershop. Really bright and nice. I'm going to put some of this in the bowl and we will generate a quick lather and then we'll get to work here today. Stay tuned. All right, so we're back and we're making a little lather here with our Razor Rock Blue Barbershop. I didn't intend to really show this on camera, but I'm like, ah, hey, you know, I'm generating a, a lather here. Let's just go ahead and, and chat while we do it. Again, nothing, no offense attend, intended towards the makers of that aftershave. I just don't like it. Um, and you know me, I have popped off many times in the past about these long descriptions and I don't care about their inspiration. That is not to say that they should not tell people. I'm just looking to get to the notes and if I have to read down half the page, I'm like, I'm out. I don't have time for that. Um, don't, not interested. That said, I'm sure they make a lot of nice um, products. The, the ones that have been sent to me, I just haven't been big fans of scent wise, but I think they are well regarded. And so check them out and try them if they're scents for yourself and see if you like it. I'm just not a big fan of the, of uh, perhaps their style of scents based on only two or three, you know, products. I'm sure they have stuff. I tend to like brighter scents like this blue barbershop here. And we've got quite a bit of lather going there. So that should be plenty enough. The razor we're going to use today is another uh, inexpensive razor. Now the handle is a tit titanium Jurgen Hempel, which looks like it's starting to lose its color a little bit, but it's, it's super nice. Uh, that the, uh, the razor itself or the head is one of those yaki dope, uh, double open comb. It is uh, inexpensive. Also sent to me by the inspector last year. Uh, and again, a lot of people don't like the, the knockoffs. I get it. If you're, if you're making, you know, product, it, I understand how that's kind of disheartening when somebody comes and sort of under, undercuts you, um, and so forth. Uh, again, I didn't buy this one. It was sent to me, but I've used it a couple times before and I, it seems, as I recall, I kind of liked it. So I figured I would give it a shot today, if for no other reason than, than to illustrate. Again, you don't really have to spend a ton on this stuff you don't want to. This brush, for example, is, uh, I believe like $17.95 or something like that at West Coast Shaving. I like this a lot. I used it yesterday for my head and and face, and uh, it was a win, and so that is a good thing. Let's just get a little more here and see how I do today with the Yaki. It probably cost a few dollars, less than 10, I'm guessing, I don't know. Again, I didn't buy it, but it provided a good shave, and I think it was a little, uh, it was a little more aggressive than the Razor Rock, uh, I can't remember what they call it, SLOC maybe, something like that. But we'll see how we do today. And yeah, you can definitely feel a little more blade, a little, uh, little more aggressive there. Nice. So this one, if you've been looking for a double open comb with more aggression for not a lot of money, the Yaki offering here. Definitely brings that. You can definitely feel more blade, which is cool if you're looking for that. And I'm certainly not opposed to it. Nice. Feels good, actually. And this soap smells fantastic. It's it's one of my favorite barbershop scents, for sure. Very bright, which is typically what I like. And, I, you know... I say a lot of things over and over because it's just what I believe. Like, I'm not into the leathery, earthy, regardless of season, whether it's fall. I'm not into that leathery. Now, the notes for that aftershave was, I don't even remember, but it didn't strike me as what it would smell like. But um, I think they do produce some leathery type stuff, just not my cup of tea, but they do... Uh, from what I understand, have a good following and people like them. And so check them out, make your own decision uh, and see where it goes. All right, let's just sort of apply a little more moisture here. That was a good pass. Uh, that's a pretty efficient razor, that Yaki. Double open comb. 
again, the brush here, West Coast shaving is 26 millimeter, about $17.95 or something. As I looked yesterday, which is like April 26th, I think it was. I don't even know the date anymore. I'm so out of it. I just know, <laughs> you know, Monday through Friday, I don't too much pay attention to the to the date, but uh, this is nice. This brush, really, really soft and uh, hits the spot for me, actually. It's one I could use for a long time, I think. I just like the way it feels. Nice and soft. Again, I don't, don't really see the need to abuse my face with a brush. This right here, this guy, you can bet it's going to exfoliate because it's, it's, it's fairly aggressive. I wouldn't call it menacingly so, but it brings it. Let's go ahead and get that to you. Very nice. Feels good, I have to say. Might be rough for some, I don't know. You know, if, if you like extreme mild, this one's probably not for you. Like the first uh, double, double open comb razor I remember trying was the Phoenix offering and it was pretty mild. Uh, this one is not uh, that level of mildness for sure. It's certainly got more aggression and it uh, brings more than the Razorock SLOC. The Razorock SLOC was a little more aggressive than the Phoenix and pretty good. I still have it. I like it. This one even more aggressive. Just thought I would use this today to sort of get a budget shave on. And this shave, other than the handle of this razor, which is expensive, the rest of it is budget gear. Um, and it'll do just as well as, you know, <laughs> gear that's hundreds of dollars. I mean, you can literally put a shave together where you've spent 300 plus dollars on a brush, 50, 60 dollars, or more on a on a bowl. Um, you could have a seventy dollar or eighty dollar soap. You can have a three four hundred dollar razor. I mean, so you can have very expensive <laughs> shave in terms of the gear you use. And I have found that you know I do prefer some razors sometimes that the craftsmanship that are fine, like timeless or above the tie or something like that. I just like the way they feel and, you know, but, you know, a lot of times, um, razor like this, you know, will perform just as well for you. Um, now, I do believe if you're going to buy a razor like the timeless or above the tire or something, you probably have a lifetime investment there. So you can pass that down to your kids or grandkids and, and that's cool. Whereas this one, it probably won't last a lifetime. If I drop it, might it break? Maybe. Not the handle, the handle will last forever, but the the yaki head there, which is just, just a handful of dollars, probably wouldn't last forever or the threading or something like that. So you do get a little more when you're, you're buying a, uh, you know, a finely crafted razor from someone like Above the Tire or Timeless or, I mean, there are many others I'm just not thinking of right now. But I don't think, personally, having done it, I don't think I would ever go over the prices that say Timeless and Above the Tire uh, charge. Uh, personally, I've seen some, you know, three, $400 offerings. Uh, that's too much in my opinion. I would not pay that again. I have in the past, foolishly. Would not do it again. Right around that 200-ish, you can get some of the finest razors that can be had and know that that's a lifetime investment and you'll be happy with it. You don't really need to spend 400. I saw some, like some, some when some of those titanium offerings came around, they were, you know, $400 and they came in a chintzy box and all that. And I was like, no, I'm not, I wouldn't even consider it. Just would not even consider it. It's foolishness. But anyhow, just my opinion. All right.
pretty good stuff here. And for those who say the Razor Rock soap is no good, works fine for me. I'm not having any issues with it. Um, I like budget gear. Personally, I still own a lot of it. Trust me, I've gotten rid of a lot of expensive stuff over the years, and I mostly keep, in terms of software, budget stuff and regular artisan stuff and stuff like this, which I have sitting out here, Manka Root, which I like a lot. All right, let me go ahead and, well, rather than to get into all that, let's just wrap it up now because I'm already at 17 minutes blabbering. Uh, when I rinse here, I'll come back and use the Razor Rock uh, Blue Barbershop super uh, vibrant uh, aftershave, which I like a lot. Of course, we use the Yaki, or Yaki, however you say that, with the Astra Blade, Jurgen Hempel titanium handles. Really like this bowl. So check this out at West Coast Shaving if you want a nice, durable bowl with a handle. Um, I like this a lot. It's Pereira or something like that. I don't know how to say it. I apologize, but really good design on this bowl. I like it a lot. And the West Coast Shaving Synthetic, uh, sort of two-tone red and white. Really nice here, too. That not super soft, sort of feels like a... sort. It, it reminds me of my uh, Envy Shave 8-Ball Knot, 26mm. Very nice. I want to thank everybody for joining, joining me. Excuse me. Until next time, I've been your host, CDB. You are not. God bless.